Hey, welcome to the Ruckus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Um, we're going to talk about a, not a new feature this time, but a um, change default behavior in 8092. So in the past, you know, on the ICX switch line, you know, all the way through, you know, for the last 25 years, um, the switch code has spanning tree enabled by default, but the router code has spanning tree disabled by default which is fine um, and you know remember you know 25 years ago um, it was kind of expected that a switch was a switch and it needed spanning tree because it could be you know um, configured or cabled in a loop uh, in a shared network and you know a router was generally point-to-point -point links right so they were point-to-point -point router to links and didn't require spanning tree because there was no possibility of a loop well you know fast forward and um, now you know a switch and a router are pretty much interchangeable so there's no difference um, you know in the in the mind of the device it switches and routes in the ASIC in hardware at exactly the same speed so there's no detriment to doing one versus the other and in the vast majority of cases when you see a router that router gets deployed as um, in, on a VLAN, right? So you you rarely put uh, IPs directly on interfaces anymore, although it certainly is possible. So there is many, many reasons why you would want spanning tree in a routed environment uh, now. Um, and so what the new feature does is it turns on spanning tree on the default VLAN only. So if I log into my uh, brand new upgraded switch to 8092, uh, log in with super and sp-admin, which is the uh, default username and password. It's going to ask me to change that, so I'll change it to something. Um, so th that was a new feature in 8090, I believe, uh, where it automatically has a default uh, username and password now, and it sets up SSH and web and console authentication for you. So, um, right. So if we go to enable, what we'll see if I do a show run... We'll see uh, VLAN 1 here, uh, which is the default VLAN. So VLAN 1 is always the default VLAN. Uh, and we see a spanning tree here. So normally we don't show you, if it's a default parameter, we don't show you in the running config or the startup config. But in this case, because it's a change of behavior, we wanted to show it to you. So uh, normally on routing code up until now, there would be no spanning tree on VLAN 1. So why do you care? Well. Um, for example, if you are stacking, when you connect those, um, the stack cables in a closed loop, you have a loop in the back end without spanning tree, right? Uh, and so you could have a broadcast storm that would, you know, cause you some difficulty in setting up that, that stack. Or if you are creating routed interfaces, so if you have IPs directly on interfaces, you assume that they're routed interfaces, but really they're all in VLAN 1. So until you put, um a route only on those interfaces there is potentially a loop there between those routed interfaces um and there's there's you know there's other reasons why you would want spanning tree on the default vlan now again it's only on the default vlan right so if i going back to my console here um because it's only on, if i do a show span for example uh, it's VLAN 1, so it's enabled on VLAN 1. I'm the root bridge because I'm the only device in my network. Uh, but if I go into config T and I create a new VLAN, so let me create, you know, VLAN 100 and uh, I'll untag Ethernet 111, for example. Uh, if I do a show run again, we see my VLAN 100 there now right but it doesn't have a spanning tree under it so if i want spanning tree on additional vlans beyond the default i have to turn it on so i could do that with a spanning dash tree uh, or more likely i'm actually going to run rapid spanning tree in a production environment so span 802-1w um, right is is the way to turn on rapid spanning tree so again if i do a show run I now see my spanning tree 802-1W under VLAN 100. So, you know, there's there's very little reason to run 802.1D traditional spanning tree anymore. 
however, you know, there might be some legacy devices out there. I don't know, but, um, but rapid spanning tree is always backwards compatible and it's uh, much, much faster fail over and fail back. So there's a rarely a reason not to run it, but, um, anyway, so the important thing is VLAN one span tree, uh, enabled by default, uh, all the other VLANs that you create span tree will be disabled by default, but you know, having that span tree there as a default is, um, you know, going to save a lot of, of tack issues, right? When you're setting up spanning, uh, when you're setting up stacking, I should say, when you are, um, you know, building routed interfaces and frankly, you know, many customers don't know that spanning tree was disabled by default in the routing code and ended up creating loops, um, just because, you know, they didn't know that that was, that was a requirement. So, um, anyway, handy new feature, bit a long time coming and, uh, we finally got it. So, um, good little addition and a change of default that I thought you should know about. So thanks very much and have a great day. Take care.